Welcome back folks. Today we're going to go over, uh, pick up where we left off and go over extruding a sketch into 3D space. So where we left off last go around was we defined a uh, simple two-dimensional sketch. In this case we've got this, uh, this square. Now to make this into a body or a solid we're going to use the extrude tool. That's up here. It's always on the, on the ribbon initially. You go to the create menu and extrude. I'm going to hit E also from now on to select that. Now when we want to do an extrude, there's a handful of different uh, different ways we can do it. We can simply grab this arrow here and pull it up. And you can see there we go, we've got a body of a specific size. Uh, we could put in whatever size we want. Now that specific shape is being drawn coming off of the original plane where we created that sketch. So it's basically starting at zero. Now, that's absolutely fine, but we might not want that. We might want it to be floating or to be offset by some specific amount. So if we work through the extrude properties over here, uh, the start is what we're going to be looking at. So in this case, we started on the profile plane, but we could just as easily start on an offset plane. And that adds another box here. And this is asking us how far off of the original defining geometry do we want to start this extrude. So if we said 10 millimeters, you can see that it'll actually start extruding that 25 millimeters, 10 millimeters up. So working through each of these, the start is the point that we start extruding from. The direction is what direction we extrude. In this case, we're going one way. And the extent is how far. And in this case, we're, uh, we're going up 25 millimeters. So I do want this particular one to start directly off of the surface. So I am going to say profile plane. And we are going to define this as 50 millimeters to make a cube. Now, the final thing, we have to make sure that the operation is set to new body. And go ahead and hit OK. And also do a couple of things. One, we'll obviously create our new shape. It'll also create the little body definition over here. So we're going to go ahead and rename this to cube. And that's really all there is to it. Now we've got a, a 50 millimeter cube. We could certainly go ahead and start modifying this solid, this body directly with some of these tools up here. But for this specific example, we're going to look at how do we now that we have a 3D shape modify the other dimensions of that shape. Obviously we can define everything about it via its original base sketch, but if we wanted to say punch a hole in it, how do we do that? Again, everything in Fusion is sketch driven, so we need to create a sketch on one of these faces. And there's two ways to do that, I'm going to show you both. Uh, one is the easier but slightly less best practice way. So we're going to select the face we want to operate on here, come up, hit create sketch, now I'm going to create a circle and one of the, uh, again, creating sketches directly on the face is easier in a lot of ways than the alternative, but it's fewer steps, but uh, it has some disadvantages too. So we want to create a circle. So I'm going to hit C for circle. You could also come up here and hit C. Because we created this based off a of face, we have access to the original geometry of that face. So if we sort of move the mouse slowly along the top line here, you can see that as we get toward the middle, this little triangle shows up. And what that's, uh, what that's indicating is that that is the midpoint. The little triangle is Fusion's indicator for midpoint. So now without clicking, if we just hover there and then pull straight down, you can see that it's locked the cursor to the midpoint. And now as we approach the midpoint, the other dimension, it makes us aware that that is actually our center. So now I'm going to click and release once, and I'm going to go ahead and define the size of this to be 40 millimeters, and hit enter. So now we have a circle that, because Fusion helped us align things, has been defined uh, equivocally to be the center of, uh, of this larger shape. So at this point we're going to hit finish sketch. Now we've got two sketches created. We have our original base, and we have a new one. I'm going to go ahead and rename this one. be side sketch and now we want to take that and we want to use it as the basis to punch through and we're going to use the extrude tool again for that so I could come up here and hit extrude in this case I'm just going to hit the letter E which will also bring that tool up I'm going to select the geometry to extrude 
Now we could certainly drag this backward. You can see and cut. We could just punch all the way through and cut and that absolutely would work. A more elegant way to do that is over here in the properties. Again, we have that start, which is where we're going to begin. So in this case, we want to begin on the face. We do want to go only one sided. So we only want to extrude one direction. However, instead of extruding a specific distance, the extent, we actually want that to go to an object. So in this case, we're going to say to object, and then I'm going to select the opposite face. Now what this does is it binds the, uh, this extrusion to begin on that face and extend to that face no matter where those faces are in space. Making sure that the operation is set to cut, go ahead and hit OK. Now we have a hole cut through. Using that two option is specifically useful because if we go back and edit our, our uh, main sketch and we were to change the size of our, uh, our object to say be 100 millimeters and hit finish, Fusion will go back and calculate, it'll recalculate the extrude. It will also recalculate the cut that we made because we told that cut not a specific distance but to go from one face to another, it automatically tracks where those faces are and repeats that extrude, basically, or extends it. Now, if we want to make one more piece of geometry on one of these faces, we'll make it on this face and we'll do it in the, in, in the better practice way. So that's going to be to use an offset plane. So I'm going to come up here to the Construct menu and click Offset Plane. In this case, I'm still going to select this left face because that'll give us a starting point. You can see this large yellow indicator here. Now I'm going to leave this at zero. In other words, I'm going to create this plane coplanar with the side of this object. So I hit OK. You can see construction plane has been created. I'm going to rename this to the side plane. Now with that still selected here, we can right click on it and we can create a sketch. The sketch is not within the side of the object, but is rather in that construction plane. Now we still have access um, to seeing some of the geometry, but if we were to hit C for circle, you'll see that we don't get the midpoint indicator. And that's because, strictly speaking, the geometry of that body is not present in this sketch because we defined the sketch on a secondary plane as opposed to on the face itself. There are some implications we'll get into with that later, but for now we're going to create uh, we'll go up here and create a polygon, click and release, and we'll make it 20 millimeters. And go ahead and hit finish. Now you can see we've got a third sketch created. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to the other side. And once again, we're going to repeat our extrude action. So in this case, we're going to come up and hit extrude, select our geometry, Come over to Extent, change it from Distance to To Object, and select the opposite face. Make sure that operation is set to Cut, and hit OK. So now we have our piece of 3D geometry here with two holes punched in it. That's where we'll leave this for right now. Next time we'll go over some of the slightly more complex pieces of working with bodies and sketches associated with them like projecting geometry.